This is how many book volumes it would take to contain the entirety of a sequenced human genome. The human genome, or actually only about 90% of it, was first sequenced by the Human Genome Project back in 2003. The project was started in 1990, meaning that it took a total of 13 years to sequence this first genome. Moreover, it cost a massive 3 billion dollars. Yeah, that's billion with a B. The DNA sequencing method used to do this was Sanger sequencing, which is something I have already covered on the channel in this video. Now today in 2022, the current world record for sequencing the entirety of a human genome is 5 hours and 2 minutes. Wow. <laughs> the price, 399 to $1,000. But how can this be? Well, this is thanks to something called next generation sequencing. However, to achieve this particular world record, an upgraded version of next generation sequencing was utilized. But what is next generation sequencing and why is it so powerful? So next generation sequencing or NGS, which is also known as high throughput sequencing, is the catch all term used to describe a number of different modern sequencing techniques. These technologies allow for sequencing of DNA and RNA much more quickly and cheaply compared to Sanger sequencing. NGS technologies include 1. Illumina or Solexa sequencing, which is what we will examine closer today. 2. Roach 454 sequencing, which is something I have already covered. And 3. Iron Torrent sequencing. Illumina sequencing can be divided into four main stages. Library preparation, cluster amplification, sequencing, and finally alignment and data analysis. So first, during library preparation, genomic DNA is fragmented into small segments. Then specialized adapters are attached to both ends of each segment through ligation. Second, the library is loaded up into a flow cell or chip and is amplified into a clonal cluster through bridge amplification. This is done in the following manner. And here we're only looking at a small section of the chip to make it easier. So first, the DNA segment is amplified through PCR. Then the original segment will be washed away. Then the segment bends, attaching itself to the adjacent adapters present on the chip. This bridge is then amplified using PCR and it is then denatured. These two segments can then in turn also bridge and then get amplified and denatured. So in this way, bridge amplification may continue creating a cluster of clones in the process. Before the sequencing can start, all of the reverse strands are cleaved. Now, these different clonal clusters can be sequenced through synthesis. We again examine this process in detail by only focusing on a single segment. So first, sequencing regions are added, including nucleotides, which are fluorescently labeled, meaning that we can detect the nucleotide when it attaches to the segment. This can be done thanks to the wavelength and intensity emitted by each of the fluorophores attached to the nucleotides when we shine a laser on them. This is done simultaneously for all clonal clusters to create individual reads. So as you can see, the process is quite simple. The nucleotide attaches, the laser excites the fluorophore, and we in turn can see which particular nucleotide has attached itself, and on and on it goes. Now finally, we can align these generated reads to a reference genome with bioinformatics software. After alignment, any differences between the newly sequenced reads and the reference genome can be identified. So here you can see that our reads are identical to the reference genome, except at the particular spot where the reference genome has a G, but our reads have a C. If you wish to learn more about other next generation sequencing methods, such as 454 sequencing or iron torrent sequencing, check out this playlist. Until next time.